Sorry, this is restricted territory. I seem to be lost. I wonder if Where do you, you want to go? I left Phoenix, made a side trip to Lobo City, got off on this road. I haven't seen a sign for 40 miles. Right here's where you made your wrong turn. <laughs>
Who are you? What are you doing here? You have no business here. How'd you get past the guard? Hey, Dr. Elliot. This guy broke in. I couldn't help it. He caught me. Are you all right? Better call the hospital. Better call the morgue. What happened to him? Looks like a heart attack or something. Take him out of here. Sure, Doc. Sure. The girl Susie. I knew you'd come through. What are you doing here in the salt mines? Didn't you and Vera have a date to go to the movies? Leaving right away. I just dropped in to check on M47. Oh. Here's the date on M47's orbit you asked me for. Susie just finished the job. Come on, Arnie. Take a look. There. Like I always say, after you've seen one asteroid, you've seen them all. Sure, to you, she's just a set of intercorrelated coordinates. What fun is that? Yeah, she's a beauty, all right. Have you named her yet? Oh, I don't think I know her well enough to call her by name. After all, I haven't even computed her ecliptic yet. it as long as I have. Well, the orbit shows a slight perturbation, but could be a graph pull from the moon. No, I doubt it. I set the exposure meter at 10 minute intervals. Maybe we got enough photos to make a fix. Is there anyone standing by in the dark room? Yeah, Vera is, of course. Let's get down there right away.
How are you doing, Vera? Here they are, Les. What do you make of it, Arnie? Looks like a good 15 degree shift to me. It's a little out of my line, Les. But Susie can give us a straight dope with no guesswork. Yeah. Let's run a double check before we take these to Dr. Elliot. Get them dried off and bring them right upstairs. There goes our movie. Probably his dog anyway. Right, Susie? <laughs> Susie gets a lot more affection than I do. Susie's going into a differential phase. I never get tired of watching you. Uh, neither do I. But why Susie? Very simple. Synchro, unifying, symmetric, integrating, equitensive. Put them all together, they spell Susie. Well, it won't be long now, Les. Everything points to the same conclusion. Spectroscopic shift to the violet, plotting coordinates... <laughs> Having trouble, Dr. Culver? I can't figure it out. The interlace and the diode loop went right out of sync for no reason. I'm sure you'll be able to find the difficulty. Dr. Elliott, we've run on something you'll be interested in. Input level OK. Feedback negligible. Cathode checks. Susie, speak to me. Seems like your girlfriend's getting temperamental. Very interesting, Gaskell. If your assumption turns out to be justified. It's more than an assumption, Dr. Elliot. Oh, of course. <laughs> Pardon the unfortunate choice of word. Oh, and uh, let me know if you find out anything more about the new orbit. I can't figure him out. He didn't seem to believe you at all. Bless, I'm stumped. It may be an all-night job before I find the bug. Anything we can do? No, it's going to take lots of work to get Susie back in shape. Look, why don't you two go on to the show? All right. Might as well. See you later. If we hurry, we'll just make the feature. Yeah, oh, sure. That's the starter button right there on the dash. Huh? I should have phoned Professor Winter at Palomar or Burns at Harvard. Oh, Les. Well, we'll want verification from other observatories anyway. That's the only thing that'll ever convince Elliot I'm right. Here we go again. I'd better go back, see what Arnie's doing. Besides, there'll probably be more film ready to develop any minute. I don't know when I've enjoyed a movie so much. I'm sorry, honey. I don't understand you, Les. I've never been so tense about a planetoid before. Well, M47 is my baby. Naturally, I worry about it when she's ailing. I know you better than that. Something else is on your mind. Yeah. That swing out of orbit. Not normal. When I saw it, I got a kind of chill. It's weird. <laughs> Very scientific. Oh, I have my own scientific moments. <laughs> Would you be having one now? Maybe.
Say, you about through down there? What? Oh, yeah. Susie's back on deck and raring to go. Diameter 4.9 miles, mass over 6,000 megatons, and speed of 1,750 miles per second. And destination, Earth. Now we can only hope it burns itself out when it enters the atmosphere. With that mass, not a chance. Perhaps you're right. Perhaps I've underestimated both of you. That's not important now, sir. What is important is M47 will strike the Earth within 16 hours. And it must not be permitted to strike at all. How can we prevent it? A job for the Army. They've got the guided missiles, the nuclear warheads. Intercept and destroy it before it strikes. Stand by to ready missiles. Missiles ready. Connect automatic radar tracking. Connected to radar tracking. Stand by to fire missiles. Standing by. All stations. At my signal, the time will be X minus one minute. stations. At my signal, the time will be X minus 20 seconds. Repeat, X minus 20 seconds. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, fire. I will now announce time to intercept. 
25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, they found the target. 7, 6, The missiles five, are converging. Guard your eyes. One, zero. What's happening, Les? It's hard to say. I think the missiles have done the trick. No, wait. What is it? What do you make of it, Arnie? It's not destroyed at all. Those rockets carried enough explosive force to blow up all of New York. They had no effect at all. Something's happening. What? What? Get Elliot. Les! Failure of the atomic missiles to explode the asteroid is still an unexplained mystery. General Miles reports other steps are being taken to cope with the emergency, but refuses to give details. The atomic warhead seemed to have had an effect on the object, however, causing it to veer in its course. Unofficial estimates are that the asteroid will land somewhere on the North American continent, but no two experts agree exactly where that will be. Chances of the object striking a large city are remote. The mayor, the police commissioner of New York, urge all the people to stay where they are and not, I repeat, not give way to unfounded rumors. The asteroid is heading in the general direction of New York, but it is hoped that it will pass over without damage to the city. That unusual sound you hear is being given off by the approaching asteroid. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned to this station. We will try to keep on the air. We understand that static from the uh, asteroid is, is interfering. We hope the danger will be over any second. Averted. What's the matter with them? Can't they see any farther than their noses? But several scientific institutions are already talking about plans to send expeditions to study it. Plans? Do you realize how long it takes a scientific expedition to get underway? I think I do. Months. Oh, but less. The asteroid will stay put. How do we know it will? What are you talking about? Look, Arnie. You and I saw M-47 swerve in its path, take a course impossible to explain by natural physical laws, didn't we? Yes, we did. Any mass ten times its size and density should have been pulverized by that atomic barrage, but it wasn't. Instead, it changed its path again, struck downward toward the Earth, like a wounded animal lashing out at its tormentor. Well, what does all this add up to? What, Les? Intelligence. Now, don't laugh. Maybe it's just a crazy hunch, but I got a feeling I'd like to go down there right now. To Mexico? 
What did he see? I don't know. Maybe nothing. And uh, what about Elliot? They'll have to give his approval, won't he? Well, right now, he's in no position to approve or disapprove. Ah, oh, but less if... Look, Arnie. What if it is an intelligent being of some sort from somewhere out there? Will it wait for our scientific expeditions to get underway six months, a year from now? Or will it make a move of its own before that? From under two miles of ocean? Why not? It came through a billion miles of space. You better turn back, we're running short of gas. ¿Por qué no comen? Que está muy sabrosa la comida. Come, mira, pruébela. It is very good. That Vera. Thanks, our equipment that leaves out the chemicals. Is this what you're referring to, Dr. Gaskell? Vera. How did you get down here? Took a plane to Mazatlan, hired a jeep for the rest of the way. Wow. You know what I mean. Oh, I thought you might need these. Mm. If you hadn't been so careless. Careless like a fox. Now, what you referring to, Dr. Calvert? Never mind. Look, you must be hungry. Come here. They tell me this Mexican food is just one. Muy sabrosa. Mmm. Mmm. Water! Water! Hurry! Water! <laughs> 82. I'll do it. Yes. Cigarette? No, thanks. Hey, Les. Manuel wants us to go clam digging with him. How about it? Vera? No, thanks. I've already dug up a clam.
I'm sorry, Vera. Well, I've had more thrilling dates. Look, Vera, this thing is on my mind. Well, there's not a thing you can do about it till morning. Why don't you stop worrying and try to relax? We'll go over the whole area again with a fine-tooth comb. Start out before dawn. And if you don't find anything? Well, at least we can get back to Lab Central before Elliot learns what a fool I made of myself. You know, somebody might think that you're disappointed in not finding some horrible beast from another planet. I can't get over the awful feeling that this is the calm and that the storm is going to break out any minute. looked at the night sky without an awareness that there's more out there than we can ever hope to understand. Things we might sense if we weren't too stupid to admit their existence. Look at this. Sedative nurse. Ask Dr. Williams to prepare the patient for shock treatment. Yes, Doctor. Hunter. Can you cook? Cook? I wrote the book. So? I whipped this up all by myself. You think you'll be able to respect a husband who's probably pulled the scientific boner of all time? Les, look! This is a great improvement. 
Electroshock therapy daily until further orders. Yes, Doctor. Dr. Elliot, do you hear me? Yes, yes. I want you to rest quietly. You've been through quite a siege. And it's true. Dr. Elliot. It's not a dream. It you're, did happen. You're not yourself, Doctor. No. I myself for the first time since... How long is it since? Dr. Elliot, I must insist. Nurse! No, no, you've got to listen to me. What is it, Doctor? Well, call an artery. Hurry. Oh, for God's sake, listen! I don't know how much time I may have. Oh, please, let me explain. You've got to... Help me. Help me. Doctor. That fog, you could cut it with a knife. I get these lucid moments. Yes, go on. Everything seems clear then? No. Now that's just it. It's, it's clear and it's not. I know I'm doing something terribly wrong. During the period you can't remember? Yes, but... But I can't tell what it is. I just know that... It's as if I'm not myself, but somebody else. Someone evil and dangerous. Someone who should not be allowed to live. You have impulses to do away with yourself? Not myself. But the other one. This force inside me. Have you ever tried to commit suicide, Dr. Elliot? Well, what good would it do? He would live on, command the stars. What did you say? Command the... No, you, you don't believe me, do you? Of course I do, Dr. Elliot. No, you don't. You think I'm insane. I'm not insane. This is the truth. This is what's happening. You've got to believe me. May 23rd. Patient exhibits a marked paranoid syndrome with manic depressive effect. The clinical picture is a typical in that encephalogram readings are opposite to expected findings. The patient's alpha waves are violent during his lucid moments and read almost normal during his more violent seizures. Electroshock therapy seems to bring on patient's fantasies rather than to quiet them. The patient is convinced that he is possessed by a demon, an incubus, which dominates his actions and makes him carry out its will. 
Through this demon, he is telepathic, dominating at a distance the inhabitants of some undisclosed world who subsist on pure electrical or atomic energy. Finding their planet depleted, they are scourging the universe for fresh supplies. My glasses, my glasses. Under continued shock treatment, the patient's fantasy takes on more detail. A great energy storehouse, or to use the patient's word, accumulator, has landed on this earth under the direction and control of his incubus. Unless stopped somehow, others will land and suck the earth dry of all electrical and atomic energy resources. Patient's cerebrospinal pressure has risen to 20 millimeters. His blood chemistry shows an abnormal consumption of energy. Ophthalmic examination shows marked abnormality. Electroencephalogram, still atypical. Doctor, 
What are you doing up? Give me that record. Well, these recordings are private, you know that. The things I told you must not be known. You mean you? Impossible. Now, you're the only one that knows, and you will never tell. strange monster is alleged to have appeared without warning at this isolated spot on the shore of the Pacific, 100 miles south of Huaymas. The story was phoned in from Los Santos by Dr. Leslie Gaskell, the well-known and reputable scientist from Lab Central. He flew down to investigate the asteroid. We have recorded Dr. Gaskell's report, and here is a portion of it. We thought we felt an earthquake. We saw it standing. It was about 100 feet high made of gleaming metal. And I can only think of the giant Kronos. It hasn't moved since. It may not have dangerous intent, but certainly looks formidable. As you can hear, the telephone connection from Los Santos was very poor. Dr. Gaskell's mention of the giant Kronos refers to the great evil monster of that name from Greek mythology. Good name for this modern Cronus, perhaps one that'll catch on. Here's an artist's conception drawn after Dr. Gaskell's description. Pretty scary looking, isn't it? Perhaps a gift from another world to ours. Who knows? Speaking of Lab Central, Dr. Hubble Elliott, director of Lab Central, was discharged today from Phoenix General Hospital only a few hours after the tragic death of his attending physician, Dr. Albert R. Stern, the well-known neuropsychiatrist was accidentally electrocuted in his own laboratory by a defective circuit. the Navarro's electro plant. Ghost. Come 
mando al helicóptero desconocido. Responda, por favor. Por favor de identificarse. Military planes. Llamando helicóptero desconocido. Responda, por favor. Somos Expedicione, el centrífico de la Centro de los Estados Unidos. This is Capitán Torres, Mexican Air Force. Evacuate area at once and do not approach military objective. You're not thinking of attacking that thing, are you? It's continue radio, please, and evacuate military area. I've never been down in the insulation chamber before. Oh, well, there's nothing to be afraid of. The alpha chamber is lined with lead and titanium four feet thick. It can withstand any cosmic ray known. Fine. Moment. Yeah. 
Mr. Elliott. Did you give this interview? That's right. They, they can't do it, don't you understand? They can't. The Pentagon has given the green light. The preparations are already underway. You haven't seen that monster, Dr. Elliott. Are you suggesting that anything in this universe can withstand a multiple thermonuclear attack? Doctor, you yourself have generated the heat of a dozen suns in the nuclear furnace on the other side of that war. I tell you that Kronos has plates more impervious still. Not only can he withstand any force we're able to throw against him, but he will actually absorb that energy, become more powerful from it. Have you any proof of this, Gaskell? No, no positive proof. But I'm convinced that the giant sucks up energy like a sponge, feeds on it, is a walking storehouse of energy. And you propose to feed it the most concentrated dose of pure energy that man has ever been able to devise. Why did he choose a power plant in the first place? Who knows? A boulder rolling down a mountain doesn't know or care what it destroys in its path. You're falling into a trap, Doctor, if you think of this thing as blind, undirected. Its very construction is proof of intelligence, of a degree of organization man may not realize on this earth for another thousand years, if man is still around. All right, Leslie. What would you do to stop this thing? I don't know yet, but at least we you must... See, not... you have no positive plan. In the meantime, the giant is marching up the coast of Mexico. It's turned inland. We cannot wait till it reaches populated territory. We must hit it now. Right, Arnie. Got it? Just what I need. Les, this is something you should know. The Phoenix Hospital just phoned and I... Oh, Dr. Elliot, I'm sorry, I thought... What were they telling at the hospital about me? Why, nothing. Nothing. There's no need to lie. I know very well what they told you. Hang on, honey. Dr. Elliot. Listen. I don't know how much time I have. Gaskell, you must listen. Gaskell, here on Earth, we have learned only one half the nuclear secret. We can transform matter into energy. Up there, they have the other half. They transmute energy into matter. They have learned how to create the basic elements of matter electrically and atomically. You mean like the experiments Hallett at Boston Tech has been conducting? But their planet has become depleted of energy. How can that be? What has happened to them may well happen here if we continue using our resources at the present rate. 
Now they're sending down accumulators to find and store up new sources of energy. Life's blood. So that's how the giant grows. How can we ever stop it? I don't know. Reverse the process somehow. Cronus only the first. If he succeeds, more will come. Drain the earth of energy, of every last bit of power. The bomb. Get me the Pentagon. Well, clear the line. This is an emergency. I don't care if the plane is on its way. Call it back. That bomb must not go off. Contact BX-89 and order him to return to base at once. Yes, sir. Ground control to BX-89. BX-89, you are to return to base. Repeat, return to base immediately. Am I reading you right, you say? You are reading me, return to base at once. But we are in sight of objective. You heard the order, return to your base at once. Yes, sir. BX-89, are you returning to base? We're out of control! The controls are frozen! We are being pulled to the objective! Control to BX-89. Come in, BX-89.
All right, let's go over it once more. Kronos was governed by a distant intelligence. Somehow fashioned on Dr. Elliot. The records from the hospital all fall in line, though. Right. Vera, run that uh, tape again, will you? Gastro, you must listen. Here on Earth, we have learned only one half the nuclear secret. We can transform matter into energy. Up there, they have the other half. They transform energy into matter. Energy into matter? Anthropic conversion. How can we ever stop it? I don't know. Reverse the process somehow. Yes, but how? How in heaven's name? Oh, come on, old girl. I know I'm asking an awful lot. Please don't go into a nervous breakdown. Nervous breakdown? Yeah, Susie can stand just so much input. Then her feedback circuit overloads and jams, and she goes into a regulatism. Wait. Couldn't we do that to Kronos? What do you mean? Apply the Attenberg theorem. Destroy the monster with his own energy. Set up a field of force. Here, a concentrated shower of omega particles. Matter derived from energy could cause change of polarity. A reversal process would trigger the conversion. Kronos' power to destroy would be turned upon himself. By setting up an internal chain reaction, Kronos would become his own executioner. Yes. Yes, thank you. I'll tell him. Think it'll work? It'll have to. Cronus is headed for the atom bomb stockpile at Wainimi. <laughs> got out that Cronus was headed for Los Angeles. It was impossible to prevent panic. Police and National Guard have been powerless to stem the wild rush away from the doomed city. Military authorities state that the city is in the monster's path on his way to the huge stockpile of nuclear weapons at Wainimi. One more hope remains. Dr. Leslie Gaskell of Lab Central at this moment is closeted with officers at an Air Force base just outside Los Angeles while a lone jet plane wings in from Boston Institute of Technology with rare radioactive elements on his order. What Dr. Gaskell proposes to do, the world has no idea. Nor scientist that he is, will he make any firm predictions about an event hedged with so many unknowns. If your plan fails, only the mountains can stop him. It can't fail. It won't. I know it won't. <laughs> Right. We made radio contact with the jet. We're switching controls to the control tower. Objective is at 27, 1452 North, 175, 1807 West. How soon can you make contact? Urgent. Contact within four minutes. Report back when you sight objective. Right. AFB 
4. Come in, 4J574. Objective sighted. Head ahead. Hang on. Get me meteorology. MT3. MT3? Pilot has made contact with objective. Take over. Right. MT3 to 4J574. Go ahead, MT3. Wind drift, 8 miles per hour at 160 degrees. Approach target at 20,000 feet. Airspeed 360 from 320 degrees. Fire 1 mile 7 tenths in advance of target. Check. That wind better hold steady. Just better hold steady. Twenty thousand. Proceed. Okay, Iron Mike. Here I come. MT three to four J five seven four. Wind has shifted. Cancel target run and circle for further instruction. Got you. Sergeant. Ninety-five degrees. Drift six miles per hour. Approach three hundred and sixty airspeed at twenty thousand from fifteen degrees. Fire one mile nine tenths in advance. Check. Cronus is literally eating himself up alive. They're witnessing his death throes. I can get back to Susie, and you two can go to the movies. Les, do you think they'll send any more down? 
if they do we'll be ready for them